Hi everyone, I'm Abby. Sorry I can't be there tonight in person, uh, but I hope you enjoy my presentation about my experience sailing from Panama to Colombia, something I've done now three years in a row. Uh, I have a couple of really good friends, Estefania and Liz, and we all met on the top of Vail Mountain during the <laughs> scariest closing day. Uh, we've done a lot of adventures together, but eventually Estefania moved back to Bolivia and I moved back here to Vermont. And years later, Liz and I were backpacking in Costa Rica and we ended up meeting up with Estefania in Panama. That is her. She has a business called I Travel by Boat where she works as an agent for backpackers looking to get from Panama to Colombia or vice versa. Uh, this is because there's no roads that connect the two countries through the Darien Gap jungle. So she lives the life working on her computer on a boat most of the time when she's not in Panama City. And she lives in off of this island called Chichi May, uh, doing what we all want to do and just working remotely off of really slow satellite internet. <laughs> this is usually where we start our trip is in Chichi May off of the, in the San Blas Islands. Uh, from there, we've gone to Bocas del Toro, uh, down to Sabzuru, Colombia, and also across over to Cartagena, uh, which is a much longer sail. Um, but we go through the San Blas Islands during most of the sail, and there's about 378 islands and most of them don't have people living on them but um, some of them have the native people the kuna uh, as you can see this mother and child who approached us when we got to one island that Estefania actually was friends with uh, they get around in these dugout canoes between the smaller islands um, most of their economy is based on fishing and coconuts. You can't even imagine how much they can pile up into these canoes um, and still be able to balance. Uh, one year we had a really good friend of Estefania with us. His name is Marcelino and he is a kuna. Uh, with him being with us we had the opportunity to visit a bunch of villages in the San Blas Islands that we normally wouldn't have been able to go to. Um, they're a little bit more private. Uh, the kuna are some of the nicest and healthiest people I've ever seen in the world. Uh, they, interestingly enough, they have a really high rate of albinoism, but they don't, they look at them as more of they are the protectors who go out at night and protect them from demons and dragons. Uh, some of the larger islands um, have larger villages like this with a church and store, and the streets have some um, water plumbing that go through them, but for most of them, they live in these small houses, one-room homes, dirt floors that are on stilts over coastal marshes. Uh, last year actually was the 100th anniversary of the Revolution from the Panamanian government. They used to be uh, very suppressed by them, and 100 years ago, they were able to fight back and now live peacefully under a treaty and are left alone. As I said, they're very healthy and they can be, uh, live to be very old. This is Marcelino and his grandmother. Uh, they have little incident of heart disease and they even have few dental problems without having any dental industry around them. Uh, people who've gone to <laughs> research them have said it's probably due to their very stress-free life that they have. Uh, it's a very peaceful area. It's below the hurricane belt, so they actually don't have very much environmental factors that can affect them. Uh, just pretty good life. So we sailed from different to different islands. We um, would get approached by fishermen who would have lobsters or different kinds of fish in their boat, and we would buy it off of them and just cook it on the back of the boat and ate very well. Um, before we would have to set out on our longer sails. Uh, obviously, places where we'd go, marine life could just pop up like dolphins. Uh, there were places that we could go snorkeling. Um, it's, it's beautiful, beautiful tropical water. Um, and very untouched, pristine 
would be the best word for it. Uh, some of our longer sails um, between San Blas Islands and Cartagena, there is a stretch of 36 hours that is on this port tack. So essentially the way that the boat is looking right here is what we did for 36 hours, um, kind of sleeping upright. Uh, so you get used to it. I, I'm pretty good on the ocean. I don't know if other people could handle swells like this. Luckily, I'm with other people who are all very experienced sailors. Um, I can do what I'm told, but I don't quite have the navigation skills that they do. Uh, things happen in that rough ocean. Uh, this is, uh, rest in peace, our dinghy shadow. Shadow uh, snaps free from the boat, and although Marcelino jumped in and tried to bail it, we just, we were, couldn't get the water all out of it, and it was, had a holes, and we were literally pulling a dead body behind us, so we let Shadow go. Uh, but it was nice when you do finally see land. This is when uh, we finally got to Cartagena one year. Uh, very relieved to get off the boat and be able to walk around on dry land for a little. Uh, it's quite an experience, though. Um, Liz and Estefania and I are pretty adventurous, and I'll have to tell you that this year we did not do the sailing trip. Instead, we went to Liz's hometown of Vail, and we skied in 30 inches of snow in three days. So that'll work out for this year. Thank you.